Welcome to your weekly UAS news update. We have four stories for you this week. First up, DJI loses a lawsuit against the Pentagon. We have Freefly releasing the Ember FPV drone. We also have DJI unveiling the Mavic 3 Thermal Advance, a new drone. And then finally, an Ohio bill that is looking to ban foreign made drones. Let's get to it. And first up this week, DJI has lost its lawsuit challenging the Pentagon's Chinese military company designation. Uh, on September 26, a U.S. district judge rejected DJI's challenge, upholding the national security threat classification. Now, the ruling leaves DJI facing some major business restrictions. Uh, the judge's decision deferred to the Pentagon's wide-ranging discretion on national security matter, basically saying whatever the Pentagon says goes. Uh, while the court reportedly agreed that the evidence for direct Chinese government ownership was weak. Uh, it found that DJI qualifies as a military civil fusion contributor. Uh, this is because its technology has substantial theoretical and actual military application. That's a quote, uh, regardless of DJI's own policy against military use. Now, DJI argued that its founder and the early investor control 88% of the stock and over 99% of the voting rights, but the judge ruled that the ownership structure was difficult to to discern. This legal defeat is already making things worse for DJI. The company has reportedly lost hundreds of millions of dollars in missed contracts. We're also seeing supply shortages at major retailers like Amazon and Best Buy. Uh, this is because the US Customs has been detaining the shipments under the uh, Uyghur Forced Labor Prevention Act. That's the full name right there. Uh, this is a massive disruption considering that DJI accounts for over 76% of registered drones in the United States. Although really data that's been collected by various drone detection companies are showing that that number is actually in the range of 92% to 99%, okay? Not 70 or 80%, 92 to 99%. Uh, for public safety agencies, the costs are actually staggering. The Department of the Interior documented a price increase from around $2,600 to $15,000 per unit when they switched from DJI to approved domestic drones. Uh, the biggest threat here is a looming deadline. That's the 2025 National Defense Authorization Act that mandates a security review to be done by December 23rd of this year, which is right around the corner. Uh, if no federal agency completes the review, then DJI will automatically be added to the FCC's covered list, along with Autel, by the way, as well. Uh, this would effectively ban the certification of any new DJI and Autel drones in the US market. This would not affect any existing drones. Uh, while we want to support American manufacturing, the reality is that there are no readily available alternative that can match the uh, capability at a similar price point, especially in the recreational and the consumer space where there's no other option available. Uh, this will undoubtedly harm small businesses and public safety departments that rely on this technology. Now, one thing that is not going to arm businesses is the segue to our photo contest results. In this case, Nathan Clock has won for the second time in a row now. And here's the photo that he has in the description. This is the Lee uh, Trigartha, I hope I said that correctly, that sails into Duluth, Minnesota. Uh, through sheets of ice and sea smoke with temperatures that feel like minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit. This was recorded on January 15 of last year. Some unique history behind this ship is that it was one of the most altered vessels of the Great Lakes and boasts two battle stars for World War II service at the Chihuahua. It was present in the Tokyo Bay during the September 2nd, 1945 surrender ceremony. All right, back to the news. Freefly has released the Ember FPV drone. Now that's a 500 gram FPV drone with a high speed camera on it. And by high speed, I mean it. This is somewhere between 600 and 3000 frames per second, depending on how you set it up. Uh, if you're not familiar with Freefly, they make cool uh, cinema cameras, stabilizers, and of course drones as well. Uh, the specs are not public just yet for this model. Uh, it appears to be a significant upgrade from the existing scene lifters that we've seen uh, carrying large cameras it looks like it's a lot more compact. Uh, awesome piece of new equipment, and we uh, look forward to getting more information from the team. Next up, in some new product news, we also have DJI that quietly launched a new drone, the Mavic 3 Thermal Advanced. Now, this is a, the advanced thermal version of the existing Mavic 3 Enterprise series. And you might be saying, isn't there a Matrice 4 already? Yes, there is a Matrice 4, uh, which is supposedly replacing the Mavic 3 series. Uh, but now we have a new Mavic 3, which is kind of interesting. Uh, there was no big announcement, no fanfare at all. Uh, the drone just started appearing in the uh, developer's update and then on reseller 
other websites as well. Uh, this seems to be an iterative update focused on boosting real-world usage for professionals in search and rescue, public safety, and in inspections as well. The specs are pretty cool. The main upgrade is the thermal camera. It looks like it has an uncool VOX microbolometer with a eight micrometer pixel pitch. I know that doesn't probably mean a whole lot for some of you, but it's a significant improvement from the 12 micrometer pitch that was on the Mavic 3T. Uh, this has a smaller pitch, which should provide finer details and more accurate temperature readings for those that are gonna use it. Uh, the thermal lens also has a longer 60 millimeter equivalent focal length, uh, upgraded from the 40 millimeter uh, on the 3T. This is gonna give a narrow field of view, uh, a bit more of a zoom, a better resolution from a distance. The temperature measurement range is still robust, minus 20 to 500 degrees Celsius. Now the rest of the drone is very familiar, 920 grams, 45 minutes of flight time, omnidirectional ob obstacle sensing, IP54 weather rating, and then the visual camera is the same as the 3T with the 48 megapixel wide angle camera that uses the half inch, half inch CMOS sensor, and then a 12 megapixel telephoto lens with the uh, 56 high zoom. I know I'm going fast, but uh, this is really uh, not changed from what we have before. So um, cool upgrade for those that want to get it. It seems like it's actually available in the United States for some really odd reason. So get it before it, uh, it gets banned. In the last story this week, there's a new bill in Ohio which would ban uh, drones that are made by foreign adversaries. Uh, this bill would apply to all states and political subdivisions of the states, including colleges and also universities. Uh, the bill has no waivers, and as written, it would go into effect immediately upon passing, uh, which would ground many public safety drones and agencies. Of course, AUVSI um, is publicly in support of stripping public safety agencies from using the best possible equipment, as they have pushed in many other states before. Uh, if you are in Ohio, please uh, reach out to the state legislators uh, to get this addressed. Also, if this is going to hurt you uh, or as a public safety agency, as a college, as, uh, as a student at a college, uh, be sure that you also reach out to AUVSI to let them know that their work is going to hurt American citizen again. And finally, if you haven't yet written your comment for part 108, well, time is running out. You have until Monday at 11.59 p.m. Eastern time uh, to get your comment in. Uh, it's extremely important that you voice your opinion. I know some of you think that it's not, but it is very important, okay? Take a little bit of time, write down that comment, and then submit it. Uh, as of this recording, there were only 2,000 comments that have been submitted, which is not nearly enough, okay? Uh, it's critical that the industry, and that means you, are going to submit a comment, sharing your opinion, telling them what you think should be changed. If you are watching this, I am guessing that you are a small to medium operator uh, in the United States that would like to fly beyond visual line of sight manually, uh, not using fully autonomous drones like uh, it is currently uh, being proposed. If that's the case, then you need to comment and tell the FA that you need to be included in this and that you should be allowed to fly beyond visual line of sight for low risk operation uh, by flying the drone non-autonomously, okay? That's very important. We actually have a full video, uh, we have several videos, two videos, one explaining part 108 in general. We also have one video that explains uh, the specifics of how you should comment on this, uh, and then we have some talking points. So you can utilize all of that. It's all available on YouTube. We also have PDFs available, so make sure you download. P set aside an hour, hour and a half to get this done over the weekend, uh, and then submit it before Monday, please. And just like every week, we're gonna be discussing all of these topics in depth and then share our opinion on post-flight in the premium community. Uh, we'll see you there and then we'll see you on Monday for the live as well. And in the meantime, fly safe and don't be that guy. Greg, do you know what a Buckeye is? Mm-hmm. What sports team, what, what sports team is that? Is that Ohio? Their sports team is actually not the ones in the news. It's the state themselves. Unfortunately, they're only trying to support a few companies that pay them and mm -hmm. uh, and they don't care about anybody else who gets hurt in the process, so.